Hi guys, welcome to the channel. Today I'll be talking about my 3D printer and the mods I'm doing to it currently. You may have noticed that all the wiring and all that stuff is just scattered basically. So what I had to do was since my motherboard or what they call a main board for these got spoiled, I had to replace it with this. So this is called an MKS Gen L um, version 2.1. This is something available online. I got it on one of these websites. And um, yeah, I, I connected it to this. This is a, what is it called? It's called an MKS TFT35. So I bought this because the cable um, from the MKS TS main board was not connecting to my previous screen. And I anyways had to upgrade the main board. So I had no choice. So what I did was I thought, okay, I'll just pick up one of these screens. The cable fits in perfectly and I'd be good to go. But I did face some problems. One of the problems was I correctly integrated the whole thing, but I had a memory card in here and the memory card was corrupted. So the other reason why I had to get the screen was the old 3D printer board had the memory card reader over here on the main board, but the screen had nothing. The screen was just plain. So once I had to shift to this main board, I had nowhere to put in the memory card or the pen drive. So that's why I went for this. Now I could just plug in a, um, a memory card or a pen drive and I'm good to go. And it's quite easy to use. So the other thing was basically you go on to the internet, you pick up a build of Marlin, which is the new firmware for this machine. And um, what you do is you just connect it to your PC and uh, you put in drivers as it's an Arduino. So an Arduino is a very basic board which is used for various different types of things. A lot of college projects are built based on Arduinos. You can program them, they have inputs and outputs and this, this board here is based on that. If you were going to use a raw Arduino, what you would have to do is you would have to put a board on top of that and then that controls the motors and everything else. But over here we have everything together. So I, you've noticed this thing is a bit of a mess. I'm gonna be making a box today for this. And um, that'll just, these holes don't match up from the old box. So I thought I'd just make a box for this so it's much cleaner. And uh, yeah, I'll have this external box over here that's movable for the screen. And I'll be showing you that process. And maybe next time I'll be doing something else. Basically my extruder, which is over here, over here, sorry. Um, it's eating into the filament and what's happening is the passage through this Bowden tube is getting restricted and there's a lot of friction. So what happens is uh, if you're noticing uh, poor extrusion and you're noticing that there are gaps in between over here as you print, uh, it could be various things. One of them could be this. So this component over here is, um, it's common for it to break. So the stock one you get is a plastic one, something that I had to that just snapped because it's spring loaded and it's plastic but I replaced mine with an aluminium one then now I'm having a new problem where the teeth are eating into the material maybe it's a material problem right now this is running on Petchy and uh, if you notice the surface finish is quite poor so I'm gonna try to move the extruder motor over here and make a plate that's gonna be the first step for this machine then the next thing is widening it and making it longer and making it a larger machine. It's really easy to program this new main board. The main board's over here. Uh, so the first step is you pick up Marlin, you, um, you put in the type of board that you're using because you have various options. And then you put in stuff like uh, you have a temperature sensor on this. Um, you have to explain to the, you basically have to just change a part of the program, change a few numbers around or a name. It's just one line and it's really, really simple. You get a lot of explanations on the internet, on YouTube, and uh, you guys can contact me on Instagram and I'll just uh, share the links with you and tell you how to go about it if you require. Uh, what you have to do is you have to first start off with integrating the main board. Then you have to make sure that the machine knows you have a heated bed or not. And then you have other things like, um, uh, the temperature sensor for the bed you have to put that in you have the fans as well the fans have to be um, you have to let it know that it has a fan and the other thing is that the motors may need to be reversed so these motors here uh, this one drives the um, the hot end from left to right and there's another motor on the back end of this sorry back end of this somewhere over here 
you know, like over there. And that moves this back and forward. And then you have another motor over here that moves this whole thing up and down. And uh, those may have to be reversed. You can't just pull out the cables and reverse the polarity. You have to put it into the program. And it's just basically um, you change a false to a true and that's pretty much it. it. This thing is so simple to do now. These are a lot of new firmwares that make it really easy to put this thing together. So next up, I'll be showing you how to make this box. Probably not. It's not that easy, but I'll just be machining, a, uh, cutting a box up in aluminium and making this cleaner. And uh, on the next video, we'll be talking about this, how to make this a direct extrusion, extruder, sorry. And uh, then this cable is much shorter and there's less friction. And um, then I can also make things with flexible filament because what would happen is as the material is going through the tube, it stretches or it contracts and that is a problem with the length. So if the length is less, the contraction and the stretching is far less and you have better, prop, uh, you know, better results with flexible materials. So that'll be next. And after that, we're gonna be increasing the size of this whole machine. So stay tuned. I start off by making a paper cutout of what I want to make in aluminium. I'll check if the screen is fitting correctly. And what I'll be doing is a 45 degree bend over here and a 90 degree bend over here. I found this scrap piece of aluminium and it's almost the right width. Maybe I'll just go with cutting this cutout and chopping it to the right size and not cutting the full width. Yeah, maybe you shouldn't be doing it while it's printing. Sadly, I have some sort of screen problem. But yeah, I'll get that fixed. There we go. Luckily the screws are magnetic, but my hands are shaky. That actually should be enough because these are going to be, these holes I made are going to be hard to access, especially with the machine on. Yeah, I'll do that later. And here we go.
That is what it looks like. So now that the display is ready, I've also printed this out. This is a box for the motherboard and it has these little cutouts, one for the USB connection for the wiring and uh, yeah, and I guess this is a ribbon cable for the display and you've got this honeycomb top, I'll be able to put the fan over here and it's got all the mounts that I required. I thought why not 3D print it instead of getting into making these spacers and stuff like that. And what this will let me do is install the motherboard outside the machine. It won't have to be screwed on over here like the old one. And um, next up I'll have to disconnect these wires and reconnect it to the machine um, after putting the motherboard into the box. I finished installing the mainboard into the box and I used a few little screws to tighten everything up. The wiring was uh, quite straightforward. I just disconnected one wire at a time and uh, rerouted it through the hole. The ribbon cable came out through here and that gives me some freedom with the screen. Now there are some limitations. The wires are too short. That doesn't let me move very far. So what I'll have to do is either extend the wires or leave it here. And, uh, and yeah, next up on this machine, the upgrades would be moving this whole drive system that pushes the filament through the tube closer over here. And uh, the other thing would be changing these extrusions and making the machine bigger. Uh, next up, I'll also be showing you how to make something like this using a single extruder machine and making multiple layer. One second. Can you see this? Yes, multiple layered prints so you get different colors and stuff like that so stay tuned and uh, i'll see you guys next time thanks for watching